first I want to thank the organizers similar to the other uh, speakers and also thank the European Commission for all the work that went into the uh, proposed regulation. I think uh, Teo hit a few of the points I probably would have, um, so I'll try to keep things concise as with the rest of the speakers. So the first point I wanted to address is why we're here and why we're talking about this. And I think the answer is that when you go back to the financial crisis, what you saw was um, successful performance by CCPs and CCPs doing a very good job of managing the risk in their markets. And policymakers concluded uh, in the 2009 G20 uh, conference that promoting central clearing was a good idea. Uh, this decision then, of course, led to more focus uh, on central clearing and evaluation of the risk management measures of CCPs and now evaluation of the recovery plans and the resolution of CCPs. And so just to reiterate the point that we are here because of the past outperformance of the CCP model, as Teo mentioned previously. Another point that I wanted to raise um, is actually from the slides that Thomas put together, and it went through the probabilities of each step uh, from the beginning probability of a bank failure pre-financial crisis uh, to finally the impact of the default of a clearing member of a CCP and what the next <laughs> steps were after that default. To put a bit more granular uh, note on that, when the clearing member itself defaults, that is not necessarily um, a situation where recovery is going to occur. When the clearing member defaults, and historically this has been the case even in Lehman during the financial crisis, uh, CCPs have managed that default within the initial margin of the defaulter. Uh, I think from most people's perspective, recovery actually begins when you exhaust pre-funded resources. So the fact that uh, one clearing member has defaulted, as we've observed historic historically, does not necessarily trigger recovery. What it triggers is the management of that default, and historically that's been done successfully within the defaulter's resources. <coughs> Another point to consider is that in um, the presentation and in the slides uh, that Thomas put together, there was also a discussion of the Cover 2 standard. And really what the Cover 2 standard does is that es establishes the size of the pre-funded resources, mutualized resources of the CCP to address the simultaneous default of its two largest clearing members or two largest exposures. In the case of recovery, that actually tends to occur when assessments or cash calls are made, effectively when you have to use resources beyond those which are pre-funded. And in that situation, uh, I know that, for example, CME at a minimum covers four clearing members. So in that circumstance, you have pre-funded resources to cover the simultaneous default of the first two clearing members, and then the ability to make cash calls to cover at a minimum the default of the four largest clearing members. If those steps are unsuccessful, then you reach the point of resolution when a CCP may no longer be able to manage the risk that's in its market. But I think it's important to note each step uh, in the risk management of a default and the fact that an initial default doesn't necessarily mean that a CCP is in recovery and must call for assessments. So to follow on that, I just wanted to make a couple of very quick points about the European Commission proposal. Um, from our perspective, in addition to the incentives that Teo mentioned before, uh, some of the main areas of focus are the early intervention standards. It was noted um, previously that there's an ability to intervene when a CCP fails to meet its credential obligations. From our perspective, the important metric to consider as to whether intervention should occur is really whether there's a risk to financial stability, not necessarily whether a CCP temporarily at least, fails to meet its prudential regulatory obligations. For example, the CCP following the default of multiple clearing members may manage that default, return to a match book, return stability to the market, and at least temporarily, for example, may not be covered to or may have slight adjustments to its capital requirements. In those situations, it has to be considered whether the entrance of a resolution authority would actually promote the stability of the market, or the more appropriate approach would potentially be to allow the CCP to continue to manage the situation and return to full recovery uh, in a certain time frame. The reason we believe that's important is because intervention by the, by the resolution authority is a signaling event. The behavior of the market may change fundamentally 
when they know that the resolution authority has stepped in. There may be a view that that equates to the failure of the CCP and that may impact the trading um, behavior and the behavior of the participants in the market. So we think that should be closely considered as we evaluate the standard for early intervention. The last point I'll make is on the resolvability assessment. Uh, we understand that that has been taken from the BRRD standards for banks. And while we believe it is very important to ensure that a CCP can be resolved in a crisis, uh, it's unclear to us whether the same standard for resolvability should be used for CCPs and banks. And the reason I ask that, that we pose this question is if you look back over the past 15 <coughs> to 20 years, you have hundreds of bank failures across the US, Europe, and other jurisdictions. As a result, the likelihood of a bank failure is very different than the likelihood of a CCP failure. So it's important that we have visibility and understanding of how to resolve a CCP, but it might be more appropriate for the supervisory authority through Article 10 of the European Commission assesses the recovery plan in uh, conjunction with consultation to the re resolution authority. And if that approach is taken, it continues to separate the role of the supervisory authority who is business as usual regulatory oversight versus the role of the resolution authority who should be stepping in where there are financial crisis or financial stability issues. I'll conclude there. I don't want to take up too much time, uh, but I look forward to more conversation during the panel.